Let's have a look at my Penguin Classics, shall we? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for what you can already tell from the thumbnail and title is a guided tour or a look through of all of my Penguin Classics and I mean they're very traditional black classics, the range that they publish most of their sort of pre 20th century literature in I would say. We'll not mention that autobiography that got published as a Penguin classic only a few years ago because that was odd. Um, generally speaking these are all like I said pre 20th century titles because Penguin do of course have their modern classics range which I actually did a video all about last year and you all seem to enjoy that so much that I've been meaning to go back a little bit further and look at my older Penguin classics with you. So effectively what I'm going to be doing in this video is sharing with you all the books I own in these editions and talking a little bit about them. I think this is a fun way to just look at a general selection of books and is also fun for those of you who are interested generally in specific editions and different ranges of books from different publishers. Now I do have a reasonably large additional selection of Penguin Black Classics but you have seen all of those before because they were a part of my Ancient Greek and Roman literature collection. So I did a whole video last year dedicated to my classical literature collection which included everything I owned that was um, originally written in Ancient Greek or Latin including quite a few editions in the penguin black style. So I'm not going to include those all here because I don't want to like retread old ground and if you're specifically interested in classical literature you can go and check that video out. But this is everything I own that is not either Greek or Roman but some of which is as old if not older than those two civilizations. So without further ado let's have a look at my penguin black classics. Whilst we're on the topic of super old civilizations, that is the technical historical definition, you can take that from an ancient historian, I do have some Egyptian literature here. I'm pretty sure I've got two pieces of Egyptian literature but I've apparently muddled them up. Here it is. So I have two books here that would be considered Egyptian literature. I have the Egyptian Book of the Dead and Writings from Ancient Egypt. Now I do wish that Penguin offered more ancient Egyptian literature in this range because they're such a good go-to for any and all sort of ancient literature. Like I, I do really trust them when it comes to say Greek and Roman literature and I have um, picked up some other um, cultures literature from their range because you know uh, they're usually reliable in terms of translation, maybe they're not the most up to date, but if I don't have a specific recommendation my go-to is either these or the Oxford World Classics and they have quite interesting introductions as well. So like I said I have these two pieces of ancient Egyptian writing, although they're not pieces of ancient Egyptian writing because they're collections. This, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, is a collection of texts from tombs and coffins and pyramids um, all in one place. I will say this is one of my least favourite laid out Penguin Black Classics. This is obviously just a facsimile of a much older printing that Penguin did, um, which means that the typing and the formatting is very old fashioned and I would not describe as the easiest to read. That wasn't even the worst page there, but the font, not, not the best. I kind of wish they'd reformatted it for a more modern edition. They may still yet do that. This one first um, was published in, let me tell you, yeah, 1923. Uh, oh, actually, published first in 1899 with a revised edition published in 1923. So I don't know where the typesetting is from, but it's certainly not from 2008. Um, however, it's still a really interesting uh, volume with some really great sources in there. We then, like I said, have writings from ancient Egypt, which is a much wider range. We have some sort of like more folk tales um, or traditional stories from ancient Egyptian culture. We also have um, some more writings concerning death, a bit like in this volume, some writings um, on different pharaohs and it's a really interesting like sort of starter compilation for anyone interested in ancient Egypt and like I said has a much more modern type setting so that's good. So I will say amongst the rest of these books we have two main themes. We have books by one specific author often collecting together a few of their writings in one place as well as 
collections more generally around a specific theme or a specific culture or a specific nationality with writings by various different authors. So what I mean by that, for example, is Scottish folk and fairy tales from Burns to Buckin. This is one of my favourite High Plant collections um, from the Penguin Black Classics range. It's one of my favourite pieces of Scottish literature. It obviously collects together a lot of different Scottish literature, but I love everything in here and I think it's such a great introduction to sort of traditional Scottish tales if you're interested in them that are sourced from various different authors. So we have authors in here like Burns who are centuries and centuries old as well as some authors more recently from the early 20th century. So it's a very wide range. We have authors whose names you'll recognise like George MacDonald or Robert Burns as well as anonymous stories who we don't know who to attribute them to and it's just a great great compilation and I have similar collections like this for some other cultures so for example here I have Russian magic tales so these are all specifically again sort of fantastical tales from Pushkin to Platonov so like with Burns to Buchan we have two Russian authors here Pushkin and Platonov but also an array of other Russian authors included and like with Scottish folk and fairy tales we have both anonymous stories and stories attributed to specific authors in here I do love these collections and there are more than I own so I would like to pick them up in the future because they're a nice place to start with um, different country sort of folk tales. I also have African myths of origin so these are all specifically myths and legends to do with like the origin of the world and humans and different aspects of the universe um, but they're not attributed to anyone specifically. I believe a lot of these have been passed down orally and then collected together and retold in this collection by Stephen Belcher. So this isn't a collection of different authors per se, or at least different authors um, that you can identify, but it is a collection of different and varied folk tales from all across Africa, like all of Africa, <laughs> um, not just one area. We then have three which are in a similar vein from Penguin Classics that I really, really adore and think are really interesting ways to compile stories together, which are The Book of Magic, From Antiquity to the Enlightenment, the Penguin Book of Witches and the Penguin Book of the Undead, 1500 Years of Supernatural Encounters. So in these collections we literally have a bunch of stories collected together on a specific theme from across the world and that I absolutely adore. So the witch stories in particular go back to around the 16th century, I guess when the witch trials were becoming more popular and more folklore and superstition was popping up around witches and women who didn't adhere to the norm and you can see a lot of those like cultural origins through into like the 1600s and the 1700s in Europe and America and this one's definitely shorter than the other two but still a great one. We then like I said have the Book of Magic from Antiquity to the Enlightenment. I mean you know when Antiquity was and you know when the Enlightenment was this one's pretty self-explanatory. But we have stories from Ancient Greece in here, we have stories from the Bible in here, we have stories from the Renaissance in here, a bit of everything similar to the Penguin Book of the Undead which are all about ghosts and hauntings and well the undead dead. <laughs> Spanning all the way again from antiquity to Shakespeare. I swear I do have some books in these editions which are dedicated to specific authors but before I get into those I have two more which are not. The first one of which is Tales of the Marvelous and News of the Strange, a medieval Arab fantasy collection. So these again, folk tales, fairy tales, legends and myths that were originally written in Arabic and collected together in this volume and translated by Malcolm C. Lyons. Then lastly, for non-specific author collections, I have Hindu myths. Uh, this one, again, pretty self-explanatory. The titles are, are pretty good as it goes with these um, collections. You know what you're getting. This is a collection of um, Hindu myths. It obviously is not all of Hindu mythology, but it is a selection if you are interested in the topic and don't know much about it. This is a selection of texts that were originally um, recorded in Sanskrit and have been taken from larger works like the uh, Mahabharata and Rig Veda. But as I promised, the rest of the books in this video are specific to one author. So the only one I think is actually non-fiction is The Light of Truth, uh, Writings of an Anti-Lynching Crusader by Ida B. Wells. So this is a collection of Ida B. Wells writings. So um, these were not all originally published together, some of them are like articles, some are letters, um, all compiled in one place, some of which are paragraph long, some of which are pages and pages long. Um, so this one you can read all together or you can dip in and out of. And Ida B. Wells was a young black woman and a journalist living in the post-bellum US, so after the end of slavery, but actually a lot um, earlier than somebody like Rosa Parks and the civil rights movement that a lot of us are familiar with, um, she 
was campaigning against racism and racial injustice in the postbellum America. So yeah, an incredible woman and an incredible source of history. And then a little bit earlier we have Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol and other Christmassy writings. <laughs> well, other Christmas writings, sorry, it doesn't say Christmassy. Um, but this of course has the uh, well-known and well-loved novel The Christmas Carol, as well as some other short stories that um, Charles Dickens wrote with a Christmassy theme. I confess that Christmas Carol is literally the only Charles Dickens I have ever read, yes! only Charles Dickens I have ever read. I would like to read more, uh, it is nothing against Charles Dickens, he is an author I plan to read more by and I did like Christmas Carol but it was years and years and years and years ago that I read it so um, it is definitely not a complete education on him as an author but yeah that is of course the one that I own. Then we have very aptly two fairy tale collections and two ghost story collections. So these two ghost story collections are written by individual authors. The first one is Ray Russell's Haunted Castles, the complete gothic stories. So this is actually one of the more recent books on this list. It could easily really be in the modern classics range as well, I think, because it's from the 20th century and Ray Russell um, was a horror writer of the 20th century, but here we have it, it's in the black classics. And it actually has a foreword by Guillermo del Toro, which I think is super cool because I love Guillermo del Toro as a director and I love his films. And we then have an anthology collecting together Japanese ghost stories um, by Lafkady O'Hearn, which was first um, written in the very late 19th century. The penultimate book I have to share with you though is Franz Xavier von Schoenwerth's The Turnip Princess and Other Newly Discovered Fairy Tales. So this is actually a collection of fairy tales that we didn't have until relatively recently and so despite these being written in the 19th century they were not first published in English until the 2000s so like I said quite a recent addition um, to the uh, canon of fairy tales for those of us who can only read English and ancient Greek um, because these were not originally written in either. They were first written in German I believe. Franz Xavier von Schoenwerth was born in Amberg, Bavaria and lived 1810 to 1886. I adore this collection. If you're into fairy tales this is such an interesting collection to compare to authors like Hans Christian Andersen and the Grimm's Brothers because there are similarities but also little differences and I really enjoy that. Then last but not least we have the complete fairy tales of George MacDonald. So George MacDonald was a Scottish folklorist and and um, this is obviously his complete collection of fairy tales right here. Similarly, these were first written in the 19th century, are absolutely fantastic. George MacDonald collects together folk tales and fairy tales, but he also spins his own yarns and I absolutely adore his writing. Although this is another one that I desperately wish had been retypeset for a more modern reader because it is very tiny print in a font that is not the most legible. So yeah, if I had anything to say about the Penguin Classics range is that I wish they were consistent in retypesetting things. Yes, it does cost a little bit extra to retypeset things, but it makes them far more accessible. Despite that, however, I'm sure you can tell that I love this range of books. I have quite a few in them, particularly pertaining to um, legends and myths and fairy tales. They're a great place to go if you're interested in that type of literature. And I expect I will continue to grow this collection as the years pass by. So do let me know if you've read any of these, if you've picked any of these up, or even if you have other books in these editions that you think I'd be interested in and would like to chat more about them, particularly fairy tales and folktale collections that I don't have because I'm sure there are more. Plus I'd love to hear if there are any other specific edition collections you would like to see. I don't own every single um, edition out there but I certainly have some others including like the um, vintage Red Spine classics and some Oxford World classics but I will link down below my classical literature bookshelf tour and my um, Penguin Modern Classics video if you're interested. Until next time however happy reading and I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye everyone!